there's a great view of the Arch of Triumph from all the way at the end of Champs-Élysées and the front view of the Eiffel Tower with the Olympic rings hanging from the top like I was mentioning activities festivities uh, taking place underneath and in front of it uh, the gardens right there were completely completely closed underneath like I said I believe uh, sand volleyball is taking place from what I heard here where the bridge is it's closed as well and this is the fence that we have all around the gardens near the Eiffel Tower from my understanding all the metals have little alloy from the Eiffel Tower little metals incorporated so uh, yeah you'll get a little bit of peace in Paris if you win a medal at this year's Olympics a fantastic view with the Hotel des Invalides and all the flags well not all the flags but a lot of the flags of the nations competing at the Olympics and the most dangerous thing in Paris the pastries guys look at this crazy is Paris during the Olympics hey what is happening everyone welcome to another episode on the channel from well like I mentioned from Paris fortune has it that uh, I had to come to get some visas for chat for the following months and uh, you know I just stumbled upon the Olympics yeah when I bought the tickets when I arranged the things uh, in order to come here at the embassy and do all the paperwork I was uh, I totally forgot that the Olympics will take place so uh, yeah with that being said, we're going to discover how a city organized the Olympics uh, is throughout uh, this period. And what better spot to start the introduction of the video than at the Arch of Triumph. I just came from the embassy uh, from Chad uh, probably 30 minutes ago. Uh, I had a cup of coffee because I woke up really, really early in the morning to fly from Bucharest at six o'clock so at four o'clock i was up did not have anything to eat whatsoever went in first thing first here at a mcdonald's had a cup of coffee after finishing the paperwork and now trying to discover how the city is during uh, the olympics yeah a lot of people said dude really are you going in paris during the olympics it's gonna be pure craziness well hey might as well you know i never been during the olympics anywhere in 35 years and there's always a first for everything. So without any further delay, let's get this episode from Paris underway. So far, I can say I walked probably for around 45 minutes throughout Paris. I didn't feel much just because I was uh, with my friend that helped me get uh, the visas for Chad, which hopefully I'm gonna get him today, hopefully. If not, uh, tomorrow but uh, yeah I mean besides the major points like here where the arches uh, things have been uh, quite quiet yeah this is packed as you can tell people are aligning to take photos in certain spots of the arch look at that but overall on the side streets uh, where the embassy was yeah very very quiet not uh, not many people and the most dangerous thing in Paris, the pastries, guys, look at this. We got this uh, roll, let's call it the cinnamon bun, but with pistachios. Man, haven't seen one before with uh, pistachios, so of course you have to go and dig in. I'll tell you how it is in a little bit. Not bad at all. Actually, it has some uh, little chocolate cookies as well but not enough to the de you know, destroy the taste of the pistachio so uh yeah pretty good and the most famous street 
in Paris, the Champs Elysees. Yeah, it's packed. But last time I was here was uh, 12, 13 years ago. I wouldn't say it's uh, actually more packed than it was back then. You know, so uh, so far, like I said, things have been just decent. Thinking that this is the largest event that's happening right now in the world. Oh yes, the bling bling is also here, Louis Vuitton and a whole bunch of other name brands can be found all throughout Champs-Élysées. I'm actually looking for some food right now. I had uh, only that uh, little pastry with pistachio and another croissant in Bucharest before I left. And uh, yesterday I had only a couple of uh, meat, the, gra uh, the ground uh, meat that we have in Romania and that was pretty much it. So it's been a hectic last two days waking up at four every day catching uh, either a car train or flight at six in the morning so yeah crazy 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 here's a great view of the arch of triumph from all the way at the end of champs elysees how beautiful is this view right here yeah zooming in quite a bit but uh yeah, stunning, absolutely stunning. And it looks like uh, part of uh, Champs-Élysées, it's actually closed. It's just for bicycles and uh, walking. Yeah, we're gonna go all the way there, but uh, probably have to stop and get something to drink. It's way, way too hot. 29 Celsius today in Paris. I do have to point out that uh, security-wise, yeah, it's, uh, it's packed all the way uh, up to the arch here on Champs-Élysées is packed as well. I cannot film. If I film uh, in front of me, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, military machine guns and so on. I do have to mention that uh, compared to what I remember 12, 13 years ago when I was here last time, the city looks way, way cleaner. It's, uh, it's sparkling clean at every corner, guys. Uh, right now heading towards uh, the Seine River, probably to the Alexander Bridge and then heading over to see how uh, the Notre Dame of Paris uh, looks like. Supposedly it's gonna be uh, finished in the next uh, six months or so. So yeah, let's uh, go and explore more. No specific plan uh, in mind. And finally made it to the Seine River as well with the famous Alexander Bridge in front of us with the bleachers. Yes guys, have you seen the opening ceremony for the first time? An opening ceremony at the Olympics is not held in a stadium. I thought that was actually quite, quite unique. Like I said earlier, a lot of ambulances and uh, actually something more disturbing was a uh, guy was pretty much stopped uh, in front of me. They uh, pulled everything out of his uh, pockets and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a scene. I could not film anything. Like I said, I cannot film much because it's completely packed with security, machine guns everywhere. I mean, I cannot point uh, the camera at them because, uh, you know, I don't want to cause a scene. I don't want to, you know, have any trouble or anything like that. Uh, but either way, let's uh, come back to uh, the opening ceremony. I mean, uh, there were some uh, controversial uh, things there for sure uh, with uh, The Last Supper. Being, uh, being portrayed in a completely different way. Dionysus, what I believe was the, the guy uh, in blue with the transgender uh, uh, appearance. Uh, what else do we have? Quite a few things that, uh, you know, some, uh, piss some people off and, uh, you know, uh, I guess they made others uh, feel uh, more comfortable. And yes, the Eiffel Tower, the famous Eiffel Tower, we're gonna head that way in a little bit. And on the Alexander Bridge itself with its beautiful, sculptures yeah part of it is with the bleachers like you have seen from the other side and the Romanian flag what a coincidence the first time I pull a camera on the bridge I see the Romanian flag but yeah and another thing uh, that uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of but uh, most likely are if you follow there will be some uh, swimming competitions taking place in the river itself so yeah another first see really interesting that uh, this uh, Olympics was actually one of the cheapest uh, lately way cheaper than the one in London and way cheaper than uh, the one in Rio mostly because a lot of the venues were already in place well beautiful beautiful summer day here just uh, wasting some time until uh, this evening where I have to go to draw 
a uh, place, a uh, city nearby Paris, like an hour away or so. Yes, the prices of hotels, accommodations in general are extreme. So that's why I booked something an hour away by train for only 50 euros a night. Everything here was over, well, over 150 per night or 200. But yeah, let me zoom in on the famous Hotel des Invalides, the famous place where Napoleon is buried, where the tomb of Napoleon and other generals, but mostly, you know, it's famous for being the resting place of Napoleon. A fantastic view with the Hotel des Invalides and all the flags, well, not all the flags, but a lot of the flags of the nations competing at the Olympics. Now this is new, something I haven't seen in Paris before or I have not seen any photos of it. This is a Russian Orthodox cultural center and most likely a church as well. Man, look how it looks, the design. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly when this was built, I would have to look it up. But yeah, when I seen the golden domes, I said, huh, an Orthodox church. But once I got closer and I seen the, the siding, the facade, completely, completely different. I said, man, it's like a temple, it has the body of the temple and the dome is uh, of an orthodox church. Very, very cool. Much needed shade. Man, walking in this uh, heat can definitely get to you. I'm sweating all over. I feel like every time I'm sitting down, I'm just wetting my pants. But uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, there are a lot of electric vehicles here in Paris and uh, from what uh, I used to be aware of uh, they were trying to ban uh, diesel by 2026 are you guys aware if that's still uh, in place or not really really curious if uh, I didn't even check it in the last uh, in the last year or so if any updates were made in regards to that and a great glance of the Eiffel Tower between the marvelous marble building I can say some of them are marble look at this how beautiful are the flowers right in front yeah guys I can definitely say that uh, I forgot how beautiful how beautiful Paris actually is you know we've heard stories you know the same way we heard stories with uh, New York City it's dirty a lot of rats and so on yeah those things uh, might happen you know there are different neighborhoods all throughout it's a humongous city but overall it today reminded me of how beautiful everything in Paris actually is and made it in front of the Eiffel Tower ground zero here in Paris as you can tell right here I think there's a sand volleyball taking place just underneath but yeah this is where uh, everything starts in Paris and the front view of the Eiffel Tower with the Olympic rings hanging from the top like I was mentioning activities festivities uh, taking place underneath and in front of it. Uh, the gardens right there were completely, completely closed underneath. Like I said, I believe uh, sand volleyball is taking place from what I heard here where the bridge is, it's closed as well. Yeah, here is completely packed, yeah. So the other parts, even though they are a little bit quieter here, it's crazy. And one more thing uh, regarding the medals that I forgot to mention previously is that from my understanding all the medals have little alloy from the Eiffel Tower, little metals incorporated. So uh, yeah, you'll get a little bit of peace in Paris if you win a medal at this year's Olympics. And this is the fence that we have all around the gardens near the Eiffel Tower. And this is how part of the park south of the Eiffel Tower looks like. Yeah, everyone is running towards the shade. Now you can still go up the tower from what it seems like. All the entrances were open, were packed but open. Alongside the promenade in front, you can get some really, really awesome views. Even though the gardens uh, are closed, you can still come here. Actually, this is called Promenade Marie de Roumanie, Mary of Romania. But uh, yeah, great views here. If you cannot make it 
or see if we can actually pass on the bridge itself. It looks like there are some people there in front. We're not sure exactly. A cool little statue here in front of the Eiffel Tower. It's called a diver, specifically put for the Olympics. Now it looks like this side of the bridge is closed as well. But yeah, still pretty cool. Things by the river, they're just normal. Not many people. Like I said, the majority seem to be here at the Eiffel Tower or participating at the event. And food wise guys ended up at a supermarket that has some cooked food and you could build your own bowl went with some teriyaki chicken olives and cheese high protein and high fat you know for uh, these days where i'll be doing quite a bit of walking and although the bridge in front of the eiffel tower is closed you know with so many bridges you'll find a view with the cn and the eiffel tower as well So yeah guys, I'm getting a little bit tired being awake ever since uh, 4 o'clock. You know, good thing with the views that take away from the tiredness from time to time. But once you stop in the shade, oh look at that, someone's getting married, someone's taking uh, bridal photos. But uh, yeah, good thing with the good views that, uh, you know, makes uh, makes the day easier when you walk with no purpose that's when you end up in the most uh, distinguished astonishing corners <laughs> look at this very very cool how cool are these uh, corner street uh, buildings they're absolutely a jewel kind of putting an end to the day super exhausted heading towards the train station so i can go to drew the building that you have in front right there it's the tallest building in Paris, Montparnasse, and that's where one of the train stations, one of the train stations is located. That will take me to draw an hour away or so. Too expensive, guys. Too expensive to stay here in Paris throughout the Olympics. Uh, they're in draw, like I said, 50 euros per night. Way, way better. And a full-size hotel with all the amenities. So, uh, yeah, the train station is next. And then one hour later, I'll be checking in and crash for the night. When I see the train stations in Western Europe, it kind of makes me a little bit jealous of how uh, bad our stations in Romania are. Yeah, heading to Dro. Granville, line 22. The trains, impeccable. Absolutely impeccable. Guys, putting an end to the episode. The following day, made it to Dro. I did not film anything yesterday just because I was I was tired guys I was super super exhausted so uh, yeah I went straight to sleep well I went to my friend's house uh, we had a beer and then uh, he drove me here he actually lives here in draw he recommended to come to draw because it's so close to Paris and uh, you know way way cheaper to stay I'm still I'm still exhausted again the last couple of nights I slept just two hours, three hours max, and then uh, a bee bit me on my back and one in my mouth while I was having a, while I was having a drink. It got into my glass and I drank it and uh, it stung the, the inside of my mouth. Not that bad because it's a little bit dizzy, but still. Before putting an end, let me show you a little bit of the outskirts of the city of Dro. A small little city here, 30,000 people or so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to Lidl right now, uh, grab some groceries and. Uh, grab a coffee and then I'll see oh, I'll do not later I'll see which one but uh, gratitude should be the only attitude if I'll film anything else in Paris most likely I will because I have to go for the visa I'm not sure if I should go today or tomorrow depending when uh, they're gonna call me but uh, we'll find out we'll find out exactly and I'll make another episode I'll probably go to the Louvre as well and a few more other places that uh, I kind of want to see after 12 years see how things are holding up but again, gratitude should be the only attitude. Don't forget to give it a like, share, subscribe, whatever you think this video deserves. Peace out. Till next time.